everybody and welcome back to another her video review. This is Saber Rex coming to you live and today we are going to be looking at the 118th scale Despletosaurus Taurosus by Creative Beast Studio and David Silva, its creator and founder. <laughs> so here we are. There is our amazing Tyrannosaur. And before we take a look at this incredible figure, let's take a look at the packaging for it. Shall we? <laughs> so here is the package art for the Displetosaurus Tarosis, done by none other than Gabriel Uguido. <laughs> and as you can see, inside the box itself is a diorama you can place behind the figure. Or, which is always great if you want to do that. You can take the cardboard out and, yeah, give it a nice background. But anyway, going on to the back, we of course have information about the dinosaur itself. <laughs> and, yeah, you can see all the obligatory product shots for the other members of the Beasts of the Mesozoic Wave 3 Tyrannosaur series. <laughs> yeah, and with this particular dinosaur, there's only two left to go. Well, one left to go, if you don't count this one. But anyway, I digress. Putting the figure back in place, let's take a quick look at what comes within and the packaging alongside this toy, shall we? Inside you get this cool collector's card with the artwork on the front and the product shot on the back, as is normal for this toy line. You also get the ever-important instructions. So here those are, and of course, as with all the Tyrannosaurs and all the beasts of the Mesozoic in general, for or everything outside the raptors, you gotta pop the uh, tail on using a hair dryer to heat it up first before you try to actually hey, assemble the figure because it'll soften up the plastic and help you, um, yeah, it'll help you with everything you need in regards to getting everything assembled without the risk of breaking anything. <laughs> but yeah. Always, always, always read the instructions before you assemble these figures. And I personally find the hair dryer is the most um, useful in these cases because honestly, you don't want a wet, um, a wet dinosaur to dinosaur toy that is um, kind of slippery to hang on to while you're trying to assemble it. And I honestly don't like toweling these figures off after soaking them in hot water. I mean, it works, but it's not really that pleasant. Compare that to a hairdryer, which is easier to to handle, and yeah, you you get my you get my drift. But anyway, in addition to those, we also get this really cool stand for the figure, which I will showcase later on in the video. And of course, you also get spare sets of legs and feet. Like this. And of course, like this, <laughs> as you can see. Now, in addition to those spare legs, you also get, get three sets, three pairs, I should say, of spare feet. Now, the standing feet are currently on the figure itself, on the uh, spare legs, but it also comes with a set of closed toes that allow you to pose it like it's walking mid-step and one foot is off the ground. And then you also get a second set of toes that looks more like it is taking a step and about to t uh, take that foot off the ground. And those pop on nice and securely. I'm not gonna pop them on for you in this video because honestly, it's a lot of hard work and I need to loosen up the joints on those feet. But you get the gist, I hope. Um, but anyway, 
Moving on to the figure itself, here we have our amazing Despletosaurus. And I gotta say, he is definitely one of the more interesting uh, Tyrannosaurs in the lineup. Definitely one of my favorites. His coloration is based off the Antsingi Dwarf Chameleon of Madagascar, which honestly really, really looks nice on this figure. And I honestly think it's very realistic um, in regards to a color scheme for a dinosaur because it really looks like that kind of dull brown camouflage color you would expect for an ambush predator like this. And I gotta say, I love it. Now, if I was to take him closer to the camera, like so, you can see all that beautiful detail. He's got very small eyes, which are a very nice blue, if you can see that. Um, and as you can see, he's got those beautiful big scales on his face. He's got lots and lots of texture here, and I love the color gradation uh, along the belly and the back and the sides. It's just beautiful. It, and I love how starkly contrasting that yellow uh, is against the the reddish brown. It it's just so good looking. It it really is. That um, the pro the product shots. Oh, they don't do it as much justice as they should. But yeah, it it's gorgeous. Now the other cool thing about this figure is, of course the articulation. And this dinosaur has roughly... Yeah, he's got roughly, like... Oh... 22 points of articulation. Or close to it, I should say. <laughs> yeah. He has jaws that can open and close like this, and his jaws close very nicely. They do have... do They do have a little bit of a gap right there, but... It just kind of makes him look like he's anticipating a feast, and he is slowly about to open his mouth. And if you look inside the mouth, you can see those beautiful teeth, which are pretty sharp, honestly. He's also got a tongue that's poseable as well, but it turns out theropod dinosaurs had tongues that could not move, so I don't really mess with it at all. But anyway, I digress. Uh, he can do a lot of good articulation. Um, not so much up and down, but um, right and left, he's got very good articulation on that neck. He can do a bit of up and down. Um, well, he can't really do down downward mo motion, but he can do up like that, about that far. And, of course, he can also move the head up like that. Yeah, he, he does have some good head uh, range of motion, but yeah, that, that head and neck, because it's so short and um, the ball joints inside are pretty interest, um, pretty short in regards to the, the length of the neck, it, it doesn't give as much movement as it should. But, yeah, it's still pretty cool. He does have a torso that can move up and down, and... He can move it side to side, but the legs kind of block it a little bit in regards to that side to side motion. The arms can move at the wrist, elbows about that far or back, this far forward. So he's got a nice 90 degree hey, elbow bend. And if you want to, you can do a full 360 at the shoulders, though I do not recommend it because of clearance issues and the fact that you could inadvertently pop the dinosaur's shoulders out of place but he can move that of those elbows out quite a bit not as far as he, he should but yeah he he can definitely move quite a bit and of course the wrist swivel is present on the figure of course you don't want to pose his arms like this that doesn't look natural because Dinosaurs could not pronate their hands. Um, yeah, they, they, they just could not do that. Um, it, they'd break their wrists if they tried. But anyway, he does have a significant amount of leg motion forward and back at the hip. And yeah, he's got 90 degrees worth of knee bend on the standing legs. <sighs> yeah, at the knee. And the... And the, um, 
yeah, the walk, the posing legs also have a good degree of motion, but I'll, I'll cover those in a minute. But he does have the ability to move his tail up, down, and unfortunately, this particular figure does have some problems with wanting to stay, his tail to stay in. So I don't do that had very much. Um, but yeah, he can move his tail left and right, like, like so, as well as up and down. And the joints on the tail move. And of course, you got a wire in the tail, so you can actually bend that tail into all manner of poses, and he'll stay there. And it's, it's absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. Now, in regards to the figure, um, and its set of standing legs. If we pop one of these legs off, which you can do just by gently twisting and pulling, like so, and these are tight joints, so don't worry about these popping out at any time and without you wanting it to. But yeah, this leg pops in like so, like that. And of course, he got excellent posability, just like that. And again, as with the other leg, 90 degrees of movement at the knee, and about 90 degrees at the ankle, but this ankle joint is very tight. I, I, I tried loosening all these up with a hair dryer, and they're still quite tight, but as you can see, He's got some nice forward, back, and, well, back and forth motion in that ankle. And, of course, you can also pose the feet. Eight forward, back, and they do swivel side to side like this, because they're on a ball joint. But, yeah. Now, he does stand up nicely on this stand. And he pegs in very, very, very securely, like so, like that. And as you can see, he looks amazing. Yeah, so that's our beautiful Despletosaurus. Now, you don't want to pose him on the stand on this rocky stand for too too long um, it's great for dynamic poses and photo shoots and um, drawing him as a model um, which I like to do but it's not that great for long-term uh, posing because eventually the plastic might warp and he'll fall off of it and you do not want that so it's best to pose him with his standing legs and just kind of let him stand in a sort of static pose. Maybe with his head and tail or and his arms like dynamically posed to make it look like he's looking at something or something like that. But yeah, it, it's an absolutely incredible figure. Now, in regards to facts about this particular dinosaur, Despletosaurus taurosus is um, known from the Horseshoe Canyon formation and it's also been found in other formations as well throughout um, North America. This particular um, Tyrannosaur, there are actually about three known species of Despletosaurus, possibly four, um, but yeah there are um, the three species that are currently valid for Despletosaurus are Despletosaurus terosus, Despletosaurus wilsoni, and then Despletosaurus horneri. And it is believed um, that potentially Despletosaurus may have been the ancestor re leading directly to Tyrannosaurus, according to some um, phylogenetic uh, analyses, but we're not entirely sure about that yet in regards to um, its relationship with T. rex and um, other tyrannosaurs. We do know that it also is part of a sub of a of a tribe of tyrannosaurs called 
uh, Despleta Sorini, alongside the controversial Thanatotheoristes, which is um, a relative from the same formation as uh, Wendy Ceratops. Um, so it was a bit earlier than Despletosaurus. Some people think that Thanatotheoristes and um, Despletosaurus are in fact the same animal, but there is enough evidence to suggest that at present they should remain separate, um, as separate genera. But uh, maybe when we find more fossils of Thanatotheoristes, we might uh, solve the puzzle once and for all. Until that time, who knows? But anyway, Despletosaurus was one of the most um, iconic predators of the environment 75 million years ago uh, in late Cretaceous North America. It was one of um, two tyrannosaurs that ranged throughout the upper Midwestern and Western uh, United States into Canada, and it actually shared range with the Albertosaurine Tyrannosaur Gorgosaurus, and they probably encountered each other quite a bit um, in areas where their range crossed. But um, it it seems like Despletosaurus lived a little bit further south for the most part than um, Gorgosaurus did. Um, evidence seems to suggest Gorgosaurus was more common in the north of where they shared territory, while Despletosaurus was found a bit further south. But they shared range with a lot of different species of dinosaurs, including hadrosaurs like Parasaurolophus, Ceratopsians like Pachyrhinosaurus, Centrosaurus, and Albertoceratops, and uh, so, some other species like Spiclypius, and as a whole bunch of ankylosaurs such as Euoplocephalus, um, raptors like Dromaeosaurus, and troodontids like Stenonychosaurus and Latini venatrix, just a very, very diverse array of fauna um, in North America during that time, and Despletosaurus was definitely taking full advantage of that, more so, it seems, than Gorgosaurus could. Gorgosaurus seems to have specialized more in hunting hadrosaurs, but Despletosaurus could also take on um, more heavily armored prey like Ankylosaurs and Ceratopsians as well as Hadrosaurs, as both stomach contents, bite marks, and quite a few other things show. And it also seems that Despletosaurus may have been a pack hunter based on fossil finds where they have shown, well, where paleontologists have found multiple bone beds of uh, Despletosaurus that were fossilized together. And it's one of several tyrannosaurs for which this behavior is known, um, or at least hypothesized, I should say. Um, Tarbosaurus and Teratophonius and Albertosaurus, it all seems like they and Tyrannosaurus and Despletosaurus were quite sociable in nature. And there's evidence they also would fight one another as well, um, in the form of... Um, bite marks to their face, to their skulls, um, and that was probably an important means of establishing dominance within the pack, um, or within whatever social structure they had. But Despletosaurus was absolutely one of the most uh, formidable um, tyrannosaurs within its range. Now, in regards to price, um, regarding this figure, yeah, this is not a cheap figure. It's about $140, which is about the same price as the Beasts of the Mesozoic um, adult Triceratops, or the Gorgosaurus and Tarbosaurus and Albertosaurus, but it's not $200 or more like the Tyrannosaurus Rexes. Um, 
Yeah, it, it's still a big and expensive figure, but if you can save up for it, it is well worth your time to get. This is an incredibly, incredibly iconic dinosaur, and it has appeared in many different types of um, movies and television and books. Um, if you remember Little Das's Hunt uh, from the Dinosaur Planet miniseries, um, that was actually... That was actually all about um, a family of Despletosaurus. And if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Because that was actually a pretty good episode. Um, but yeah, Despletosaurus is definitely one of the more iconic Tyrannosaurs. And I can't recommend this figure enough. It is definitely one of my favorites. And it's arguably one of the most robust of the Tyrannosaurs. Now... Size-wise, this figure is approximately 20 inches long and a little over, like, 6, maybe 7 inches high, but it's slightly shorter, I found, than the um, Gorgosaurus and the Albertosaurus. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's not a small figure. It's just a little bit shorter um, in regards to height, but it, it's just a beautiful figure. And again... I really cannot stop recommending it. This is such a cool toy. And, yeah, if you want it, I say go for it. Go for it, go for it, go for it. But anyway, this is Saber Rex signing off saying, you're never too old to play with toys, be a toy nerd, be proud of it, and please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and have a good night. Thank you. Bye bye